Hey guys, welcome to Enzyme Mental. Before we begin, hit that subscribe button below and click the bell so you don't miss any notifications. And today I'm going to detail how maintaining high levels of the hormone adiponectin supports an optimal metabolism as we age. So first of all, adiponectin is made and released from cells in our white adipose tissue, or white fat. White fat is the primary form of fat found in the body, and it's certainly the form of fat we're we concentrate on when we're trying to lose weight. Adiponectin is essential for maintaining insulin sensitivity or the ability of our cells to properly utilize insulin while also clearing our bloodstream of excess glucose, fat, and even the toxic byproducts generated from prolonged exposure to, to a refined carbohydrate diet. The primary health problems associated with aging are obesity and associated metabolic disorders like insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, hypertension, and cardiovascular disease. And a consistent lack of adiponectin is definitely a contributing factor to these conditions. When activated regularly, adiponectin improves glucose tolerance, increases insulin sensitivity, improves lipid clearance, and also reduces systemic inflammation. One mechanism that is particularly beneficial to increasing adiponectin is the hormone fibroblast growth factor 21, or FGF21, which is a starvation-induced protein that is elevated after a week of consistent fasting. So when FGF21 is introduced, it normalizes both glucose and triglycerides while inhibiting lipogenesis, or the formation of triglycerides from glucose, fatty acids, and carbohydrates. FGF21's effects can last for more than 20 hours after activity, so FGF21 is definitely part of the exercise-induced uptick in immune activity that I've mentioned before. The absence of adiponectin as we age accelerates the aging process and ultimately shortens lifespan, because older people with suboptimal adiponectin production are much more susceptible to diet-induced glucose intolerance and much slower lipid clearance. An obvious part of aging is the gradual decline and deterioration of tissue function. In aging fat tissue, there's usually an increase in pro-inflammatory macrophages and impaired glucose metabolism, and this is all part of the cascade of metabolic events known as inflammaging. The loss of adiponectin accelerates fat tissue inflammation, which itself is a hallmark of aging. An adiponectin deficiency is also problematic for the liver and kidneys, although a gradual slowdown in both kidney and liver function is a normal part of advanced aging. Markers of kidney inflammation like C-reactive protein, tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin-1 beta, and interleukin-10 are much higher in adiponectin deficient people. Consistently low adiponectin as we age is especially problematic for the liver as this lack of adiponectin contributes to, to both the formation of liver tumors and also liver fibrosis, which is the excessive accumulation of scar tissue in the liver. With an ongoing deficiency of adiponectin, there's also an increase in liver inflammation, especially in the presence of a high-fat diet. For an older person, maintaining adiponectin instigated insulin sensitivity and the consequentially reduced demand for insulin from the pancreatic islets means the size of the islets remains small while their structure and function remains optimal. The gradual breakdown of pancreatic function is a well-known component of advanced aging, unfortunately. So with ample adiponectin present, even a much older person has far better insulin sensitivity even in the presence of excessive dietary glucose than someone who doesn't. For those of you who follow me, this should definitely sound familiar. I've said countless times before that the body of a consistently active individual will utilize the nutrients they're taking in far more qualitatively than someone who's more sedentary. So even at rest, an active person is burning far more calories than someone who doesn't exercise, and what I've just explained to you is a large reason why. There are certain supplements like zinc, the B vitamins, and even omega-3s that all contribute to adiponectin production, but if you can try committing to regular exercise for at least 30 minutes three times each week or more, it really makes a difference. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy.